Welcome back to PPCM's Painful Truth. Today's guest, Nikki Wilson. Hi, Nikki. Thank you so much for today in giving me your time and educating me on your peripartum cardiomyopathy experiences. I first want to, with my whole heart, um, give my deepest condolences to your baby um, that was highly affected from this disease that is preventable. Can you please introduce yourself and let us know where you're from and how old were you when you were first diagnosed with your first PPCM baby and how old were you when you were diagnosed later with your second PPCM baby? Um, I'm Nikki Wilson. I'm from Kentucky, um, a small town, Madisonville. Um, I, my first time I was diagnosed with PPCM, I was 22 weeks pregnant and I was 26 years old. Um, um, then my second time, I was fully recovered, normal um, injection fraction and doing great. And in my 26th week, um, I again went into heart failure at 36 years old. And with um, uh, baby Peyton. Um, yes. So with her pregnancy, tell me everything that you were feeling. Like what was happening with you? Um, during when you were saying, t- you know, at that time when you, you know, started to feel like this is not right, something's not right with my body and um, things up to giving birth. Well, I'd been very sick. I had hypermesis and so I had morning sickness all the time. And so they were watching that. And then, um, I just got to where I couldn't hardly take it like, and it was early on, say 20 weeks and I wasn't, I hadn't gained any weight. I was, you know, losing weight and I couldn't catch a breath just walking like a normal walk. And before I was used to getting up and doing aerobic exercise, you know, cardio and, um, strength training, I coached cheerleading then. And so, um, it was just really strange. And I kept telling my doctor, you know, there's something just not right. Um, and they were like, Oh, it's normal pregnancy. The baby's just growing. And, you know, I never had any swelling in my feet, my hands or anywhere. Um, and then the morning that I woke up and I'll never forget, um, July 25th, 2008 I woke up and I felt really congested like I could not just catch a breath and I went to an urgent care they decided to do an x-ray because he thought that I had maybe um and I mean this was just a general medical doctor thought I maybe had pneumonia sent me down for an x-ray and I got back up and he was like you've got to get to the emergency room you are your lungs are full of fluid and I had gained 16 pounds from Monday to I think it was a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So, um, they, I got to the ER, they came in and a bunch of doctors started doing tests and everything. And the next thing I know, um, I crashed. I'm not sure exactly how long, um, I was out of it, but, um, then I know I was being life lighted (laughs) and it was all just, really 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 scary um and my mom and my dad were both crying I had no idea what was going on um and then while I was in the helicopter being transferred to Nashville to Centennial Heart um I flatlined again so um then I was this is what I was told um put in their CCU unit on a ventilator Mm -hmm. and, um, monitored. Um, I didn't, I was out of it for probably two days. I think it was about 48 hours. And, um, then I finally came to and 
was told, you know, they really wanted to terminate the pregnancy that I wasn't going to make it or the baby wasn't going to make it that they just, and they just didn't see any, you know, any hope in it. And I refused. Um, I was going to carry the baby. And so they kept me in the hospital. Um, then I was there from July 25th till September 6, 17th. Um, I again started to go into cardiac arrest. And so they did an emergency six section and took Peyton. Well, since I had went into um, heart failure at 22 weeks, she had stopped growing. So she was born at a pound and four ounces, um, 12 inches long, and her lungs did not get a chance to develop. So um, her life, the year we had her, was spent in the NICU at Vanderbilt. She was on a ventilator. We had tons of surgeries. Um, she, it was just very, very difficult time in my life. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have made it without the wonderful nurses at Vanderbilt and the Ronald McDonald House in Nashville. They were wonderful resources, but it's nothing that someone should have to go through living away from your family for a year yeah. and just staying every day in the NICU with your baby. I am so sorry. Yeah, that's, uh, that's she was getting into. Yeah, we were getting ready to come home on her birthday, um, August 17th, and she passed away 13 minutes before midnight on her birthday. Yeah, uh, we were going to feature, um, We I saw the date, it was, um, <clears throat> she was born on August 12th? August the 17th. August 17th, 20th. And she passed August 16th. And now with what we know about this disease and the prevention, uh, do you feel that the, if you were provided the NT pro BNP test during pregnancy, that she would still be here today? Definitely. I definitely wholeheartedly feel like she would be here with us today and she would not have had to go on the vent um, she would not had to have suffered the way she did. Right. Because my second pregnancy was so much different. It was still very, very scary. Right. Um, I was hospitalized for three months right. um, on the cardiac floor. And it was not easy. Um, I did crash a couple of times, but I was on the right medications this time, but it, this time could have been prevented also. Yes. And what, what I feel is the awareness that we're spreading is, is that this simple blood test that cost $15 out of pocket that insurance does cover you know, we have all these other, you know, so many blood panels. It's like, why not include this one NT Pro BNP test? Because it can also, you know, it saved, it could save mommy, it can save babies. Um, and, you know, my, my heart goes out to you because here you're recovering from this diagnosis and the trauma that you had to live with because you were never diagnosed. So therefore you were never treated until at a life threat. And so I, I mean, I very much can relate in a sense where my life was at a threat, but I, the fact that you, you know, your baby, you know, is now, you know, has, you know, angel wings and, is your, is your angel and pushing you to spread the awareness that, you know, I believe that, you know, energy and soul baby, you know, elderly, we all 
we we all exist like we just transform our energy energy never dies so she's you know i i do really feel that you know she's guiding you through this recovery process and you know being there with her sister you know at those times and so you had your second pregnancy how did that go and how did the doctors now that they had awareness with you with peripartum cardiomyopathy with your history of experience with Peyton how was the second pregnancy compared to the first pregnancy and why that you feel that the BNP test maybe would have saved her life they um they did not take me seriously on this pregnancy either even with my um past heart failure um i started about I'm sorry the same doctors no i had um i had a different um oh, of course, OB. because they didn't have the awareness the first time so why would you go back to them right, <laughs> right. Okay. so i had a different ob okay. and i had a um of course a high risk team right. that was supposed to be completely familiar with my history evidently was not and then i had a cardiologist that was per se, he said that he was, that he had had a patient that had um, peripartum before, um, but he did not um, show that he had any awareness of it because I would tell him that I had shortness of breath. My resting, when I was sitting at my desk, because I was still teaching, um, I'd be sitting at my desk and my heart rate would be 150. Mm -hmm. And I was like, something's not right. And they were like, well, this is normal pregnancy. You've never been this far along. And I was like, I can't walk down the hall and breathe. This is not right. I can't lay down flat. I can't sleep. Uh, this is not how it's supposed to be. So they, um, they would do a urine test and they were like, Oh, that's fine. You're not, you don't have preeclampsia. And I was like, that's not what I'm worried about. Um, never did they do the pro and P pro in P B and P until I got to Nashville. Um, you know, uh, they put the Zio, the monitor that you wear for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, the cardiologist put that on me, but, and I wore that, that was actually three weeks before I went into heart failure again, where I was diagnosed. Um, but that also was me going to the emergency room and having to be lifelighted again. And while I was in the intensive care, my mom, I had my mom to check my um chart like the my chart where you can see your results yeah I he had like never that. contacted me about the results from the um right. heart monitor which showed that i was having current heart current. failure indications wow. so i was never i was never made aware it was until i completely hit rock bottom right and got to nashville that anything was done. You know, it, you know, it's mind blowing that we're sitting here talking about this and gynecology and about babies and lives and uh, uh, mommies that just gave birth. And, um, you know, I've been doing a lot of research about the NT pro BNP test and how long they have known this and why it hasn't been provided to women, um, you know, and at all, um, you know, as mandatory. So here, I have here because I've been having these amazing conversations with veterinarians. Okay. Hmm. Better okay. conversations with veterinarians than in the medical field with gynecology. Everyone in gynecology, forget about it. Birthing birth keepers, it's hard. There's it's it's rare for them to want to be educated and informed. And look at informative information is not fearful, but is life saving. But with veterinarians, they already have four 
I don't know if you can see this. Hold on a second. Can you see it? Okay. Showing NT Pro feline. There you go. Feline snap test. Feline pro BNP test. They oh my have, gosh. Mm hmm. A self test for the BNP for cats called snap test BNP. They also have it for dogs. So. <laughs> They have it's a incredible. whole, uh, it's called, um, I want to say, I want to spell it first. It's I-D-E-X-X, I-D-E-X, I-D-E-X. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like a, um, a pregnancy test. It's like, it's like that. And you're waiting, you're waiting to see the, the, the blood snap and it says BNP with a little circle and it tells you quickly assesses cats with cardiac risk heart failures oh my goodness breed history arrhythmia any cats respiratory signs you know which my cat has so nt pro bnp hold on one second and so this is what i'm saying how come they have it for cats and dogs but they don't have it for babies and mothers Test appear, um, apparently healthy cats consider at risk for cardiac disease, murmur, breed history, any cats with respiratory sign to help rule out cardiac causes and adult cats prior to, you know, a life threat recommended follow up diagnosis with confidence by measuring the most stable cardiac biomarker NT Pro BNP snap test that can provide reference liability quality technology for superior diagnosis accuracy at the point of care for your feline. This also applies with dogs. Automatically active snap tests can save time and improve workflow and snap test pro analyzer. Early diagnosis saves lives for cats. That's unbelievable. I'm going to actually, I'm going to get your phone out right now. And I want to see your face because I am going to send this to you right now. Now you lost your baby. You've been through what I, hell and back like I went through. And they have yes. a whole system for feline cats and dogs of the NT Pro BMP test, and we're sitting here screaming bloody murder, getting diagnosed at a life threat when we can't breathe. Go yes. Look at, it. Go look at it. I just sent it to you. Oh, you can't. You're on your phone. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, my, you'll see. You'll but see this is so crazy because if they would have done that simple test, that could have prevented me from being away from my bonus boys. So I have two bonus boys that live with us. Um, being away from them and my husband for three months. My mom had to, she's a personal setter like this, home health. She wasn't able to work for the three months because she stayed up there with me at the hospital to make sure that I got the right care. Um, that's just, that's unbelievable. And that's why we're having these conversations. Yes. Does it make sense? There's why I have why friends that, that are that labor and delivery. A cat and an animal is more important than your life and your baby's life. How does that make any sense? I mean, are we just calling not. you know the duck a duck? If it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. I mean, like, and I'm really sorry, but the American Heart Association has known this for decades and they're now admitting that. So why hasn't there been any change in, in decades? Why is there zero change? I don't understand this. And I know that people are probably going to be, you know, like saying how they feel about 
what I say about the big associations that have withheld this information from women and, and babies and, and families and, and husbands who have watched their families suffer and had to be mommy while mommy was in a coma like me. And like, why? What, you know, they're not, people are not going to be like, they're not happy. But I mean, like nobody's saying anything, nobody's speaking up because I had my times of death called. I'm a healthy girl. I've been a healthy girl my whole life, but that health has nothing to do with a pregnancy induced complication, never being mm -hmm. diagnosed or treated. And we have zero diagnosis in gynecology. And that is why we have baby loss. That is why we have the highest maternal mortality in one of the highest, richest countries in the world. I mean, when I saw that and I thought, hmm, I was trying my hardest in every which way to slice it in, in a sense where how, what is the reason behind this? Why won't there be real support? Why, when people are informed, they feel fearful and not educated? Why is it this not applied during the, the policy and practice in medicine once having the awareness? If it's, if they have, if cats and dogs have a BNP test at home, I wonder if for felines, I wonder if we can take that same test. Okay. I wonder if it would determine a, a, a person. Why not? Or make yeah. it just like how it's made for a feline, but for a woman. Like what is. I don't understand so hard about that i mean it's a it simple test been. it's not it's a simple blood test it's under it's five it's fifteen dollars i mean girls don't know to ask for it we're young you don't you didn't know no. to ask for it they don't give it it's not mandatory because it was it's going to save lives and and in return they would make so much more money if they made it mandatory. You know, they would make so much more money because there would be so many more testings that would, yes. they would have to do their follow-ups on EKGs. They would have to do this. They would make more money by mandating this blood test for all pregnancies, all humans, all babies, dogs, cats, you know, if it, it would be wonderful because then maybe we would die in, you know, in a, by an accident, not by something that could be prevented. Right. I'm so sorry. My heart goes out to you and your family. And I know that there's just like endless, um, just, injustice yes i mean i haven't been able to return back to teaching right um it was a blessing that i've gotten to stay home with my little girl she's four but um i love teaching and i taught um special needs that have like the learning disabilities they're just the adhd the um the SLD children, the emotional behavioral children, that was my, you know, that's my passion mm -hmm. to help those kids. Mm -hmm. And um, I haven't been able to do that. It took away, you know, my career because even once I'm recovered, my doctor said that he doesn't know as stressful of a job that is if I can go back to it. So, I mean... It's taken a lot from me and it could have been prevented if people would just get educated. And that's what's so heartbreaking is, is that, and my cardiologist, Dr. Carol Watson, <clears throat> Dr. Carol Watson at UCLA at the Women's Heart Center. And she's the director of the Barbara Streisand's Women Heart Association program fund. And she literally says to me every time when I send her a link that just recently, that woman that said she's 35, uh, 35 years old 
had uh, cardiac arrest, um, now is on a heart transplant. And the one thing, whenever I show her different stories, she always says it's heartbreaking because it's so preventable. And when she says that, you know, her, her talents and wisdom and, you know, the, the willingness to learn and listen, you know, and, 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 and have her support in the medical community as a cardiologist to say that and to say there is, you know, 100% preventions and that it's heartbreaking and she hears heartbreaking, heartbreaking. And it's so heartbreaking that this was just two days ago that I posted that with the, the woman who, who, you know, yeah. suffering and now on a heart transplant that PPCM is responsible for heart transplants in the U S that are women that are very young and to find out I was on that list. <laughs> yeah, I was on that list and it was very scary just to think that I was not, you know, going to get not going to be able to go back to just being me being normal. I know I, but we can't, that's in the past. I mean, we will never be the same. I know I would no. say what's normal, you know, how do you go yeah. from normal after this? Like, um, you know, a lot of people say that, you know, it's, it's very, um, it's this disease just literally like strips away joy, which yes. should be joyful. And, um, that's why, you know, I call this the painful truth because it truly is. It, it, it's painful because it's physical pain. It's mental pain. It's and the fact that it's preventable, it's preventable pain, it's the grieving, it's the anger, it's the never ending justice, it's the um, the questions that we want to know. And as women, since the beginning of time that have been giving birth, and now that it's 2022, and women are still dying with zero change, when felines have the NT pro BMP test at home that you can order online for dogs, but we don't even have the awareness in gynecology for this test that should be already mandatory, like decades ago when they were all aware of it. Obviously there's aware, they have awareness because they have a whole freaking kit and instrument diagnosis. It's, it's really, truly, um, amazing that social media allows us to be able to talk about this for women and for our children, our grandchildren that our children are going to, you know, provide hopefully us someday that we will, you know, live to see and there will be we will be part of changing history for, for all women and babies and your baby most definitely had a purpose on this life. Unfortunately it was gone too soon, but her purpose was that the NT pro BNP test, as well as raising the screening labs and testings for, you know, the woman, the mommy, keeping mommy healthy, keeping baby healthy, healthy, that there can be wellness prevention during pregnancy induced complications with raising the standards, screening labs and testings of seeing the heart through a chest x-ray, knowing your EF percent, knowing your NT pro BNP test doing all these follow-ups throughout your pregnancy and throughout 
the visits after giving birth because everything peaked after. Women don't get diagnosed until after. They're di getting diagnosed in the ER, being flown by a helicopter, you know, by the paramedics. Like when it's determined as early as 10 weeks pregnant with an NT pro BNP test. So I, I feel that with this interview, I, I feel like this has layers of, you know, life-saving information that we haven't even like touched upon. I mean, we can probably go on talking about this for hours. Yes, definitely. So does your, you know, does, why don't you introduce your, your second baby and, um, how old is she today and how is she doing today? What is her, um, her feelings about this disease? Is she aware? I know she's young. What do you, what do you, how, are, how is this changing the dynamic of awareness in the house? Hi. Can you say hi? Hi. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Can you tell them how old you are? Um, I left the at all, but now it's a bull. And you're four. Well, you are just the cutest little girl. I love I'm seeing your precious photos yeah. on Facebook. You are so stylish with your outfits. I love it. I got my Dalmai one. Yeah. And you got a little panda bear on you. Yeah. You so we didn't have school today, so we had PJ day. I love so, that. Right. Can you tell her that you're a heart baby? I'm a heart baby, and my mommy is a key, I'm a warrior. Yeah. Oh, and guess what? Hi. I have a heart baby, too. And <laughs> I'm a heart mommy, just like your mommy. We're heart, we're, we're warriors. We're strong yeah. women yeah, warriors. And I'm a heart baby. <laughs> Yeah, you are. You're a heart baby, my I'm, love. I'm mommy, little mommy. Yes, you uh, are. Yeah, and sometimes I, I like playing stuff, like um, like hiding teeth, and like cups and robbers. Cups and robbers? Do you know what? Do you know what? who would love to play with you? Hide and seek? My heart, my heart baby, Leon. Do you want to see what he looks like? Yeah. Have you shown her Liam? Yes, we've seen pictures of Liam. And he's dressed up in a superhero costume. Yeah, and, and I was on the spot where I had my first boyo party and my theoro party. I want I to have my boyo party to do a toy story. And I yes. was at a park. Can you see Liam? <laughs> Yeah. See? Would you like to play with him? Yeah. And meet him someday? <laughs> um, I have mommy can't come back and um, play like me and him to have a play date. Yeah, oh. she's already asked earlier today if they could have a play date. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we're going to have to probably make that happen someday. I would, okay. they would, we would love a play date. Oh my goodness. Yeah. How and like fun. you and mommy talk together and you guys can like talk to each other and me and Jim can play. Absolutely. That sounds wonderful. <gasps> that sounds like a great idea. That's a good plan. Let's yeah. let's plan that someday. Yeah. And I have little panda bells on my um on my panda and and I'm holding like um like um and it, like walking a flower. And they're pretty pink. Uh -huh. I love pink. Do you have your pink? nails? <gasps> you have your nails painted. I was going to get mine done today. I love them. Uh, I I, um, my, knee, um, my mommy painted my nails. Good color. <laughs> well, I think they look fabulous. They look absolutely gorgeous, my love. Me too. And get to my wagging over here. We're not going to plan all your toes right now, okay? 
But I want you to get in my wagon. You want to go play, playing Barbies, and I'll be in there in a minute? But I haven't been playing with Barbie. I've been walking Bowie. Okay. Um, but it's kind of like, I can't, like, can I like playing it? No, go play. Go well, watch Bluey, and I'll be in there in just a minute, okay? Can I have my heart moving now? Madeline, please. Can I have my heart moving now? Yeah, you can take those in there. Cute. I finally got to meet her. <laughs> He's busy. Good. Busy's good. So, um, does she, is she aware? Like, is she, I mean, she's so young. Does she know what a heart baby, does she know that your heart stopped? Yeah, she knows that um, mommy was sick in the hospital. And um, when she was, I guess, three, Mm-hmm. Sometimes um, she would want to run and do stuff, and I just couldn't keep up. Yeah. And um, she'd say, Mommy, it's okay. I know your heart's still sick. And it would break my heart because she's aware of of it, you know. She knows that Mommy can't run as much as, you know, and she knows that Mommy gets tired easier. Um and it's it's horrible for your four year old have to have to be understanding that that. Yeah, Liam at five. I would say more often than not talks about how he doesn't want to die. Or that what heaven looks like. Right. Or one time he was crying and uh, my mom passed away right after my heart procedure. And, um, we have four months after, uh, and, um, he, and, and then my, my father passed away 18 months later, but they they were in, so in love, um, you know, as teenagers, it's only natural that they stay, you know, that they're together, um, and, um, you know, stress kills. So I, I blame it all on PPCM, but, um, when they passed, you know, he kept saying, when are they going to come back to life? You know, when do you come back here? Like he didn't, he's trying to understand what, what, what death is. And I'm trying to say there is no such thing as like death because we're made up of energy. You know, people can feel each other from across the world, you know, um, that's energy you know we're all connected you know and that's why we get signs from the other side you know because the veil is thinner than we believe and so you know i feel that when a child is constantly talking about you know are you gonna die i want to know that it's it's too young and like even john my husband he says he said the other day he said you know, Liam, you don't have to think about that for a very long time. You're going to live a very long life. But, you know, he asks what, what happened, you know, what happens when you die? I said, your heart stops, you know, I mean, we don't, we, we have symptoms and diseases, but ultimately in the end we die because our heart stops. So that's my answer. Once your heart stops, that's it. You're done. You know, you, you, you don't, you're no longer at this life, but you go to the new chapter of life and then you go to the other side. And then from there, you know, they are energy like angels that send you blessings and send you miracles and guide you through life that, you know, things that you wouldn't, you know, necessarily be able to accomplish. They can move us like chess pieces, you know, and, and, um, connect people to help people, with other things, you know, like people serve their purpose with some people, you know, they come in your life, they go out of your life, you know, they were meant to be there at that time, you know, like we, we shift just like energy and transform. And so I, I'm really trying to educate him that, um, and I will have this book that I, you know, been writing to come out that, um, because I, I too, um, my education was on my background was K through six education, teaching, um, 
I always, you know, cater to the ones that did have learning disabilities. I would focus mainly on their strengths, not their weaknesses, because your strengths will always excel and your weakness will always be a weakness. And, you know, I'd say to the the little, you know, boy or girl, I said, you know, okay, so you got a D plus, but let's find where you get an A plus because that's where they're going to do great in life, you know? And so we, you know, at, what I realized is, is that um, women coming together, you know, on behalf of like, you know, this disease, I realized that there's a lot of children that are involved and those children are going to grow up to little young ladies or, young men and there's, you know, and so I have something, you know, very specific, like, you know, dedicated to them, um, about the questions that, and, you know, in a child written, you know, pop-up actually will be probably, um, you know, to just talk about this, but to have comfort and peace that, the struggle is here, you know, the struggle is only of, of loss and grief and, and the physical life here. And so there's, there's a confusion, I think what happens. And I feel like there needs to be more conversations about that with children because they are little sponges. They are aware, you know, what they don't, what we, we don't see, they do. So I think that monkey see, monkey do. We want to guide them not to have fear, you know, but right. to be fearless and to be, you know, strong and um, and to live life to its fullest and not strength, try to strengthen the weaknesses, but don't focus on them because there'll always be a weakness. So if we focus on life, on things that, you know, we're, we're good at and we're happy. Um, I always say that that's kind of like a good start with, um, at a young age with a PPCM baby is, uh, you know, talk about those hard things that we don't want to talk about in the young age because they're so young, but if they're talking about it and they're asking about it, um, we shouldn't blow it off. It should be a hot topic. I feel like not all the time, but something where they should feel comfortable to talk about and, and, you know, go to spirituality and, and religion and, and, you know, find, you know, their, their love, you know, for, for God and for, um, their self-worth and, and to understand that, that there's two sides, there's, there's, there's our side and then there's the other side but they still both exist. It's just energy shift transformation. That's why we still get the signs. And you know yes. that with me. I get the, my mom shows off sometimes to me. So I don't know where she is. Okay. She lost her power. Do you know that it stopped? It, yes, and it, sure my phone know. rang and. No, it stopped at 11, 0, 1, 11, 11. That's when your number. Up. When it hung up, I actually am recording it right now. It just went to 11.02. But when it hung up, it was literally at 0-1-1-1-1-1. And I was like, I looked at it. I was like, what? Crazy, right? Yes. Energy. I'm like tripping. Wow. I just videoed, I, I mean, I, I'm going to send it to you. I mean, it, the number kept going and going and going. So I caught it a little after and it took me a minute yes. to be like, what the, but it literally somehow our frequency just went off at zero one 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 eleven eleven. There we go. That's your angel. Just more proof. More proof. I we, that was so not planned. That that just happened. I mean, literally, because I said you know about the one one one. I said that, and then you get disconnected, and it literally was right there. <laughs> Hi, you know, it really is. I mean, there are there are 
things that we can believe of of you know things that we can't see or touch you know like i always called the angels on the other side they're just like you know they're like stars that we can't see just because we can't see them doesn't mean they don't exist do you know what i'm saying exactly and um that was a sign that was an existing sign you know energy numbers songs you know you think of a person And then all of a sudden, like, you know, they contact you out of like the blue and it's been like years, you know, it's like laws of the attraction, you know, the secret, the universe is big. We're just little specks in it. Exactly. So amazing. You know, we can't, some people believe that they are the universe (laughs) and that we're not little specks, you know? Yeah. Um, but you know, that's not the case. But mm-hmm. so how I mean, how is your husband? Is this now you're off again? I don't know why. So it's, your, it's your service. It's okay. We can just keep going. It's uh Radio, I wanted to ask about there your you husband. Go. Okay, I'm back. How to watch two pregnancies. Well, no, actually, the first pregnancy was um, with a different partner. Okay. And I wasn't married then. Um, my husband now, I married in 2015. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I was still being told that I would not be able to carry a baby, um, that it would not be possible. I was still recovering, um, and I thought, I'm going to do this. I'm going to find a doctor that says I can do this. I'm healthy enough. I was coaching cheerleading. I was teaching. I was doing everything to get my body healthy as I could. And, um, then I met Shannon and we got married and, um, we discussed it. He had two boys at the time. And, um, and I was like, you know, you have two boys that are eight and 15. Are you sure you want to, you know, start all over again? Because I do want to have a baby and it may not go as planned. And um, I made him totally aware from the beginning of what had happened in the past. And um, he was very supportive. He um, had a, he has a very close relationship with God. He's very spiritual. Um, He, he told me that God will not give us more than we can handle and we will get through it no matter what. And then um, we were married for almost two years and I finally got pregnant and um, I'm sure he was scared, um, but he kept it. He, he had a brave face most days, <laughs> mm-hmm. but um, he always had a positive attitude that Adeline was going to be perfect that no matter what, she was going to come and she was going to be fine. That she was our rainbow baby and she was just going to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So he, um, I think being away from me and only getting to come and visit on the weekends was really hard on him and it was hard on the boys very much. Um, And then for almost the first year, I lived at my mom's because my house here has um, a very steep staircase and all the bedrooms and full baths are upstairs. And um, for the first year, I was still very, very sick. My ejection fraction didn't get above 20%. Oh, wow. Um, So I lived with my parents, which is only two houses down. Mm Mm-hmm. But um, still living apart from your husband and your your husband not being with your baby, it's 
it's a weird, you know, situation. And I'm sure a lot of people thought that it was strange, but we had to do what was best for me and for Adeline at the time. Yeah, obviously it's mm-hmm. whatever's easiest. You know, like my mom always said, it's, it's whatever works for you, whatever works for this person. And, you know, we have to adapt to mm-hmm. health, you know, when yeah. we're not well, um, you know, everything kind of goes out the window and you do what you got to do. Cause you know, this is, yeah. what is the, is what, and you, you had to go in above and beyond self advocacy <clears throat> through this, um, process, I'm sure mentally, um, you know, try to, you know, our group site, um, that we have, you know, it's informative. Um, I believe that's, that's where we met on, uh, on the, on the group site. And, um, it's interesting to hear, like, you know, how one has a support system because I feel like that's like so important. And the fact that, you know, you had that with, you know, your husband and he was so supportive throughout this, um, you know, really helps, you know, um, less, less worry, you know, whereas it's in some cases, you know, it's not, I was fortunate as well. John very much stepped up, um, you know, and was, you know, just, you know, brave face on, but it's, it's hard for them too. <clears throat> That's something to talk about, you know, with, with how, you know, our, our spouses deals with, um, you know, coping through this and having, you know, faith that, you know, what's meant to be will be. And you were obviously meant to live and keep, you know, keep spreading the awareness so there can be an actual pregnancy movement. You know, we're not there yet. We don't have a movement, but we're, we're starting it and we're doing it today. You know, you and you and I, you know, talking about this and about how you truly feel that this could have all been prevented if just there was more education, better training, better way of functioning within the system so women don't have to have these, you know, awful catastrophes happen to in the family she's so sweet is there anything that you would want to add with the information that can maybe help somebody else or um, somebody in your area um, that might be you know going through this right now that you have been going through for the last, you know, over within the last decade? Um, just listen to your body. Um, the doctors are not always right. You know your body the best. And when you feel like something's not right, don't let them tell you it's just pregnancy. It's just part of it. Um, don't let them blow you off and make you feel like you don't know what's going on with your body. Because so many, I feel like so many of us survivors and warriors were told that. Mm -hmm. And you hear it from so many different women that they had concerns and the doctors just kind of blew them off until it was too late. Um, We need to demand better care more awareness for the doctors that are treating us. Um, We need to find a way to make the pro-BMP test mandatory. Um, There's, it was so disappointing 
because even when I was on the high risk floor at the hospital, the nurses and the doctors there did not have any, you know, awareness of PPCM. They were scared to deal with me because of my heart. So they wanted me transferred back to the cardiac floor. Right. Even the small week that I was doing okay. What hospital literally dismissed you because they thought you were a liability? What hospital was that? Um, the one in Madisonville, Baptist Health. Baptist Health in Madison, Kentucky. Kentucky. Yes. So they basically, once again, did not want to. <clears throat> they they didn't want to treat you because you were a liability to their hospital, so they wanted you out. Yeah. As soon as, I mean, as both times that I went into heart failure, they could not get me out of there fast enough. Thank goodness that I have a wonderful doctor, Dr. McCray in Evans, in um, Nashville at Centennial Heart. He has saved me twice. And um, he is the most loving, gentle, understanding cardiologist. I can call him or his nurses or his nurse practitioner anytime I feel like something different's going on with my body and they are there. They advocate. And they are, you know, they're concerned and they take every symptom or feeling that I'm having serious. Yes. Well, I guess now, you know, knowing that it really does depend on a caring doctor, a team that is also willing to know that this is something that is going to not only save lives, but it's going to change. And there will always be updates with our study on this because this is even like you know this is new information you know with women talking about this survivors educating the medical community survivors educating the person that's standing next to them wherever they are in the world in their orbit and it's not being educated by anyone else not an association not a big association it's being it's not being educated. It's not being talked about the way it should be. It's not being trained and it's not mandatory. So it's one of these conversations that we're having um, that should be an ancient conversation since women have been giving birth since the beginning of time. I say it in every interview, but we are having this for the first time. We are trying to create this pregnancy movement. I believe it is already in development believe that we have taken the steps as survivors to do our responsibility to change history for all women and women's pregnancy health regarding, you know, this pregnancy disease that actually affects the heart. So if women don't understand and girls don't understand, and women is that it. It's, it's, a, it's, it's fluid that crushes your heart. The heart is affected by this disease. So you don't have a heart yeah. problem prior. We don't, we're healthy. We didn't have a heart problem. We had an infection that was left untreated that, mm -hmm. that, and fluid and we had symptoms and, and it was more, I, for me, I, I don't know for you. I mean, it, it was more painful to be made feel like I was completely normal when I was in fact completely dying. Like, I think that was more painful because I felt like I wasn't being heard or believed. My three right. most powerful words I always say to my son is, I believe you. Yes. And I say it all the time. And he recognizes that. He says, but mommy, you believe me? I said, I do believe you. So he tells me everything. 
because it's the three most powerful words that I think even adults should hear when a woman is saying something that happened to her and to not be heard is, is, is hurtful and it's painful. You know, it, it, my doctors don't realize how much emotionally they hurt me by making me feel like this was my fault. I got the bad luck of the draw. No, this is extremely common. It's just rare for diagnosis. And the only bad luck of the draw was, is that I didn't have an entire hospital with medical professionals that I saw over and over and over and over and over again that had absolutely zero awareness of the NT pro BMP test and peripartum cardiomyopathy, PPCM awareness and the preventions for maternal mortality during pregnancy or this woman, Leah, that just died at Cedar sinai November 21st, this 2021, this past November, she died after childbirth at Cedar sinai They should have learned from my experience when I went back to them. And that's when I feel like, where's the justice? Where's the respect for women? Especially women who survive cardiac death and comes back and say, hey, what? the heck you know i'm healthy been 105 pounds my whole life dancer yoga to giving birth and still swelling tremendously after to almost being 200 pounds over 50 pounds of fluid removed they said i had a, a nutritionist problem i didn't have a nutritionist problem never had i, I had a swelling pregnancy induced heart failure problem that they were unaware of. My bad luck of the draw is, is that my OBGYNs had zero awareness. And that was the only bad luck of the draw that I had because PPCM is so common, you know, with you and I today, what we've accomplished is, is that we are across the literally the United States of America, we both have experienced an awful catastrophe, you know, from the medical yes. community with having zero respect with women that survive this. Because it's one thing when we are struggling and everything and, and we're sick and there's like no awareness, but when we're educating them and we survived and we're giving our time and we're informing them and we're educating them. It just, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking that it's not applied. It's not, it's, it's in out one ear and it's like, oh, wow, that's bad. But then like nothing happens. Nothing's really. That's so aggravating. That's my biggest, um, you know, reason for doing this and for yes. the, re for the, the passing of, you know, Leah, her, her father is a Robert, who's a, an actor in Hollywood, same hospital, same doctors, but it's unfair because it's preventable. And I don't know what it's going to take for a real change. I, I, unless we show up and talk about these, um, events that have led us to, you know, this you know, awful, painful truth of our lives being completely stripped because there was lack of education. Can you hear me? Right. Yeah, I can hear you. So... I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Yes. Okay. So, um, yeah, self-advocacy <clears throat> is one of the, the, the things that every survivor talks about once they, you know, I asked them the question that I asked you about, like, is there anything that um, you would want to say and how, I mean, it's like across the board, throughout the United States of America, throughout the world, throughout Canada, throughout, 
you know, England, um, Scotland, all the interviews that I've had throughout the world, it's across the board, self-advocacy, self-advocacy, you know, and women, um, you know, have to self-advocate, you know, in 2022 when there's prevention and, you know, feline cats and dogs are provided this, but we're not is really just, um, takes it to a whole other, um, heartbreak, um, because, uh, early diagnosis does save lives because it prevents the disease from actually getting bad and turning into a disease um, and prevent, you know, the prevention like for, for baby loss. Um, and I, I just don't understand why, you know, you know, birth keepers, medical communities, OBGYNs, gynecology, especially at Cedar Sinai, you know, in Beverly Hills, why wouldn't they want to use me as a study and say, okay, I was wrong. Now let me ask you what was going on when you were pregnant? What did you feel? What was happening with you? I really want to understand what, what did I miss because I'm a doctor and I want this to never happen to another one of my patients. I was expecting those conversations not the conversations that was like making me feel like you know oh this is just rare you got the yes. product of the draw and um yeah sucks for you no it was sucked for me that i had your team as my medical professions professionals during a preventable as 10 weeks pregnant, once I started getting signs that you should have known that this was a pregnancy induced complication. The only test that would determine early diagnosis is the anti pro BNP test that we have that's available in the United States of America. They have other tests that are available, but they're not available in the United States of America. There's kits and instruments, but they're not involved. They're not here. We do not have access to them. The hospitals do not have access to them. The ERs do not have access to them. Labor and delivery floors do not have access to them because they are not, they're not in the order panel in that blood company lab at that hospital. So because even if they wanted to give the blood test, they don't have it in their panel. So that's where the issue is with America is, is that they need to make it available so the blood labs, it can be ordered through the blood labs. And that would require an FDA approval. Yeah. Like one of two. So it is what it is. Until we just have to do what we can to change it. Until we yep. Until we make it apparent that <clears throat> no more women should ever have to suffer if it's medically proven. Yeah. So I guess on that note, I am going to let you go and have a very lovely day. Thank and you. You too. I really enjoyed, you know, talking with you in person. I always see you every day on, on, um, you know, Facebook and, um, you know, it's really nice to hear your voice and, um, I love seeing Liam's pictures. Mm. He's such a sweet boy. <laughs> He's a love dove. I love him turning into him, turning him into a little ninja. He's saying he needs justice because I told you he had yeah. a bully. Yeah. And so there was no, there was no way of resolving it. You know, parents, they don't believe that the universe, that they are little specks in the universe. They believe that they are the universe. I realized that there was no way of, of um, them taking any responsibility. And even though I was neutral with Lee, with uh, them about Liam and, you know, I, I, I told him that we promote kindness and compassion in our family and, He's never like this. And he says, mommy, I have my reasons, you know, and it's sad yeah. when you can't, you know, can't, you can't rectify it. You just have to like, 
I, I just got Liam far away from, from them as possible, put him in a different school. And now he's a ninja every day. He goes to, he goes <laughs> to karate school. So I, 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 I'm sure like I'm going to be posting lots of karate stuff within the next few years as he hopefully, uh, you know, becomes his little strong warrior. He says, mommy, I'm a strong warrior and I can do it. And I'm like, yes, you can. So hopefully if any little boy ever attacks him ever in his life, Liam will know how to, uh, Defend where that boy will never want to touch Liam again. <laughs> he will know how to fight. That's good. Yeah. He will be a little protector. So if anybody ever hurts your little girl, you just let Liam know and Liam will be right there. Definitely. <laughs> little little hero. And um, yeah, she's she's a beautiful, beautiful, perfect. Thank girl. you. And she's precious. And I love her her um her swag and uh what she's got she has going on. so much sass <laughs> i know what's that company called again that fashion line that um she we do rick rock and ruffles and um we're moving into matilda jane but my friend's local um boutique is um faith and hope boutique and she actually has a website now so she is amazing that's where all her little character outfits with the bell bottoms come from and her johnny cash outfits oh my god actually so it's um faith and hope.com it's faith and hope fashions.com with an s it's just faith faith, hope it's faith hope fashions.com faith hope fashions.com i'll check it out yeah it's on my web um on my actual facebook page it's Mm -hmm. on there a lot because adeline reps for them Okay. Um, she's, she'll get on the website and she'll pick out stuff and we'll FaceTime with Courtney. And she's like, I want to do this outfit this month. (laughs) So she's all about her fashion. She's got to have her bows. So that's adorable. Well, I look forward to seeing her on the red carpet someday. (laughs) Oh yes. She'll be designing, hopefully. Designing, (laughs) um, you know, beautiful outfits or, you know, who knows, you know, we never know what these little guys are going to do. I can't wait to yeah. see them grow th- on, um, throughout our, our lives. And maybe, may we both live a very, very long life and, um, yes. and change history for all women's, um, health and wellness during pregnancies and for years yes. after. So thank you so much. And thank you I- for all you do for us. Yes, it is. Um, you're so welcome. I mean, this is for everyone. This is this is not about me. This is about this is about our 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 young our our young children. This is about our future. So, um, you know, they always say, "Why didn't someone do anything?" And I kept saying it. Why isn't someone doing anything? And then I just would go. Well, I guess I'll I'll be that somebody. You know, we're all you know, come out of my comfort zone. And, you know, I don't really have, I'm not like a, how do you say, like, I don't, I'm just getting into TikTok. I did my first TikTok the other day. I was like, so happy, you know, (laughs) Um, I, you know, I just, I'm not really in front of the camera. I was, I do things behind the camera. Um, But this is definitely something that I am, you know, feeling that there there needs to be a platform there has to be voices that need to be heard even if it's we're talking to ourselves we're talking exactly and may somebody hear and may somebody you know save another life just by hearing nt pro bmp test and say oh i remember i heard these girls talking about it and you know they had a very tragic story but you know they're 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 spreading the awareness, you know, so I, I heard that, you know, and then they inquire and next thing, you know, maybe I might save their dog <laughs> or their cat. <laughs> hopefully a man, hopefully a family and a woman and a baby. But, um, yeah, I, uh, however they learn, may they all just learn. And be yes. educated. So 
Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Love to your little one. Yes, I had to. <laughs> bye. All right. Bye. 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 bye, my love. Bye. Thank you for joining us and listening to the PPCM Fund podcast. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. PPCM's Painful Truth is made possible through the generous support of donors like you. Help us spread the awareness by donating at ppcmfund.com or click the link below to become a member through Kofi. Also, remember to join us every Monday and Friday for Mom Day Fitness. Have a great day. <laughs>